One thing that I think SAT students just completely misunderstand is what their priority in looking for information should be. You know, people watch YouTube videos like this, but they look up tips and tricks and they're trying to find out the small little things that can boost their score a tremendous amount. That's not how the SAT works. And people generally know that going in, but they still seek out these things with the hope that they're going to improve their score like that. And, you know, a small percentage of them are good. Most of the tips that I see online are utter garbage. They're horrible, right? A small percentage of them actually work. So you can't constantly be making new ones that still work. There's only a limited amount that can work because of how the SAT is structured. Most of them that they give you might work, but they're not going to give you the same powerful effect as the few ones, right? But they forget the main drivers of a good score. That tips and tricks and small little things that you change in your strategy of learning is not going to be the main driver of a good score, right? And to bring out this idea, I'm going to give you the analogy of running, right? You can buy better equipment, better shirts, better like clothing, better like weather tech, like a headband if sweat gets in your eyes. You can buy better shoes, running shoes, the best top of the line running shoes, a smart watch to track your workouts. You can buy better supplements to fuel your workouts. But what actually makes you better than running? If I gave all of those to someone, they might be incrementally better at running. But what if I gave the worst version of all of these to somebody who has 20 years of running experience versus a person who's never like ran professionally in his life? Who do you think is winning that race? And that's what I'm trying to explain to you on the SAT. So hi, I'm Karthik. What are the things that actually improve your score? Right? Like that runner, what are the things that improve your score? Right? The main driver of every section is the fundamental ability to put in volume. And I say volume, but I never clearly define it. So I'm going to define it for you here. It's work and time, right? Work times time, the amount of work you do and the amount of time that you like do it for, right? And that's like a general idea of volume, but it's actually like more edited of that. Like that's like a idea of volume in the sense of how it would work in terms of bigger volume and smaller volume. But there's one more component to volume is that the period of time should be long as well. So when I say time in that, I'm referring to the time that you work for. But if you can extend the duration of time that you actually do it for, right? You can do the same amount of work, right? And the same amount of time per session. But what about the time overall that you do, right? So what I'm trying to say is if you do eight hours in one day, that's not going to be as effective as doing 30 minutes for 16 days, right? The It's the habit, of course, and also the the practice of doing it daily and coming into it with a fresh mind, right? So your work degrades over time if you do it over a long period of time in one sitting, right? So we can increase your quality of work by spreading it out over a long period of time, but also longer time is just going to be more effective. And as I've talked about previously, you know, I can give you the ability to make strategies. I literally did in my last couple of videos, just how to build strategies that work for you. But how do you actually test them to make them see, like make them first of all, and see if they work? It's your volume. It's the amount of work that you're doing, right? It's doing the work to make the strategy because you need to practice a bunch to see if you can make the strategy, but it's also the time, right? Like how much over a long period of time it has to continue to work. All right. So with, I talk about volume, right? Being the main driver of the score, but so many people still fail to do volume, right? Um, I'll literally have people that I teach, right? And I'll tell them to space out the test, right? So we have like, let's say a session on one day, um, and a session on like four days after, right? And in between, like, I, I will see people literally take the exam right before the session begins. And then we go over it. Like that is so useless, right? If I've given you that much time for one thing, you should do it in between, right? Space it out as much as you can utilize the full duration of the time. And the main issue with that is nothing to do with like you or like the test or anything. It's consistency, right? And the two main components of being consistent and staying consistent is motivation and discipline, right? Um, I'm going to talk about motivation really quick because it's not the biggest driver. Discipline actually is. But in terms of motivation, right, here's how I easily get motivated. When I think about how the SAT is going to affect my life, right? If I think about like, this is like the portion of time that the SAT affects my life. And if you've seen these hands in any other video, you know exactly what I'm going to do, right? This is the portion that the SAT is going to affect your life. This is the ap amount of time that you have to prepare for the SAT, just this small little bit of time. So if this affects this, why would you not take advantage of every little moment of this, right? 
and just tr think about what you want. What is the end goal? How is this going to help you get to the end goal? That's going to motivate you instantly to actually want to do this, right? So you have an eager want and an internal want, right? Something that's not external, something that's within you. That's the strongest portion of motivation, but motivation is fleeting. It's not always going to be there. It's going to disappear. It's going to move. It's not always going to be there. That's where discipline comes in key, right? And here's how you can actually build discipline without actually going through much hard work and much effort. The idea is if we start small, we can build a pattern of consistency, which is essentially a habit, which forces us to do more work and consistently do work even when we don't feel like it. Because our ability to stick with something and do something on a daily basis actually can be more powerful than our like voice in our head that says, I really don't want to do this right now, but I'm going to. And the voice that you're going to say is that I'm going to do it anyway, regardless, because of the habit that I set. And it's kind of like human nature with habits to do them. And here's how you do it, right? You start very small. You commit every single day that you're going to do a little bit, right? And you slowly over that overload that over time. And initially you want to start with a level of effort that isn't that much, right? That's a level of effort that feels like it, you could do it forever instantly with not that much effort, regardless of like any situation, you'd be able to complete that, right? And Obviously, if you have a long period of time, you can make that really small and level it up in the first month. But if you don't have that much time, let's say you have a month or two left, you know, just commit to doing the daily work. You've probably put in a lot of work already if you only have a month left. So put in additional work now, right? Put in additional work to see that score improvement and commit to doing it daily. And that habit is going to help you stay consistent and do it and not have to rely on discipline as much as as much as your ability to stay consistent in a habit, right? And also accountability. That's another low effort way you can stick to this habit and increase your discipline. Essentially, if you have someone keeping you accountable, like a parent, a friend, a teacher, anybody in your life, or you're surrounded by other people who are also taking the SAT, they can keep you accountable, right? They can essentially keep you accountable by asking like, hey, did you do this? Or you tell them, I'm going to do this, make sure I do this, right? That's pretty much going to help you. Okay, section specific tips like in terms of the main drivers, right? For reading, generally, the main problems I see is people are caring about the wrong things for reading and they're not building strategies, right? I've already talked about this a bunch. There's no skill to reading. There's just practicing the reading section. There's just doing volume of passages, right? Reading is built with this specific guideline, right? Every I've talked about this a bunch of times that the reading passages are built with these specific structures and guidelines, right? So if you were trying to do every single reading passage, right? Let's say you do all the practice tests, you'll notice that there's a pattern to every single passage, every single type of question, and you'll see repeated types of questions. So if you practice them a bunch, you're actually automatically building strategies for these types of questions because they're actually so, so similar to each other, right? So if I explicitly, right, instead of like naturally building a strategy over time by just practicing regularly, if I build a strategy for every question type, I'm essentially operationalizing score improvement. And what that is, is that's basically making it into steps, right? What I'm doing implicitly, if I just never made a strategy is this, I'm making a strategy in my head and it's naturally just getting better over time as I practice. But if I like explicitly try to do that, I'm going to rush the process, increase how effective and strong the process is, which is essentially making a long process into steps and measurable score improvement at a faster pace, right? So I've talked about in a previous video how to build those exact strategies, do that, right? Just build the exact strategies. Um, for reading specifically, this is how you do it, right? But for grammar and math, the idea is is that people either do the wrong thing based on their skill type for the certain question that they're doing, or they just don't do it at all, right? The two main drivers, right, is knowing the concepts tested, right? So learning them and mastering them with questions, right? So stop mindlessly practicing questions. You need to figure out for every single one of the skills, where are you? Or have you learned it? Do you know it yet? And have you mastered it, right? So it's good to review every single concept generally. Go to Khan Academy, watch through all the videos and make sure you've actually explicitly heard all that information. And every time you're thinking of the question, you actually explicitly do that. You explicitly run through the steps of, do I know the specific skill? What is the specific application? And this is the application that all these choices are wrong because of this rule. This is correct because it follows all these rules. Do you do that every single time for, you know, that's specifically for grammar, but for math, it's just a matter of knowing the specific skill and just applying it. And, and do you know how to apply it, right? So it's actually good to review every single concept and figure out if you have any learning gaps, because if you don't know any of the concepts, 
practicing the questions has just become use. It becomes useless and way harder to improve in, right? What could have taken like a week of practice will take months if you don't know the skill tested because you're just guessing, right? Math specifically, all of them can be found on Khan Academy. What you might want to do is reference other videos online that talk about the same topic, but in order to fully understand the concepts, you just need to absorb that information. And Khan Academy has all the exact topics listed. And the same concept is true in grammar. Watch the videos, reference other videos, and Khan Academy has all the topics that are going to be tested, right? And I believe that the Khan Academy videos are good enough for grammar. You don't really need to reference outside videos. But the one thing that I did use for grammar is College Panda's SAT writing book. And I use the second edition because that was the one available at the time. And that's the one that I use. But the whatever is the latest one is probably better, right? Um, you don't need that book and I believe Khan Academy is good enough, but that's just the one I use and I believe it to be very helpful. It's one of the only books I've ever used for the SAT. Um, I'm, if you've seen any of my other videos, you know I have this SAT community where all these problems right, that I've talked about, we have the solutions for in the community. So for accurate practice and for staying consistent, for accountability, and for specific questions and help that actually improve your score, you can ask me at any time 24-7 and I'm either available on call or just on a message, just respond to you. right? There are three days left to apply for this community to get it for free, essentially. right? The scholarships that I'm providing, give it to you for free. And this is an opportunity to work like on this thing, right? Until your final SAT for free. I only have 10 spots to give out. The link is in the description to apply. Thank you guys so much. And I hope you learned something today.